There's a story that's not being told, the story of Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. The world has condemned it as the occupied West Bank. Could it be the biblical and historical heartland of Israel? Hear the miraculous stories of true pioneers who have dedicated their lives to the restoration of this land. Discover what's being hidden by mainstream news and media. Experience extraordinary places that few people even know exist. Join us for the Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. Well, hey guys, this is Joshua Caleb with the Joshua Caleb Report. We are stoked about today's episode and not really sure why, other than the fact this guy's name is Ben Goldstein and we've never met him before. He's a security guy, uh, an amazing defender of the heartland of Israel, and uh, we're going to check him out. He seems like an amazing guy. I can't wait to meet him. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be exciting. It seems like kind of an adventurous fellow, if I could, from what I've seen. So. Joshua. Hey, Ben Goldstein, man. pleasure to meet you. I was well. wondering if it was Goldstein or Goldstein. Well, we're all sounds like a law firm around here anyway. <laughs> Caleb Wallace, man. Pleasure to meet you. Hey. Why don't y'all follow me? I want to get everybody up to the top. I want to explain to you where you are. Sounds great. We'll roll from there. <laughs> so I'm Ben Goldstein. I'm a 40-year-old married father of three. That's awesome. Originally from Tennessee. Third that is generation. Awesome. And we've got this in common. Yeah, that's what even makes the that. friendship better. <laughs> We're good old Tennessee boys, so we know what that's like. And being out here, you really feel connected to the land of Israel. As you've noticed, as y'all drove from where you came from, you drive in Israel, basically it's a microcosm of the world. You have all climates. Yeah. You came up around 800 meters to get here. And you really go from an area of urban, of city, of hustle and bustle, to as right now, all you hear is the wind. And it's just magnificent, which is one of the reasons why I chose here. A little sidebar, when we were buying our house out here, I pointed out to my wife, I said, hey honey, if you look out in the hills, you'll probably see sheep and shepherds. And as I said that, just <laughs> on cue, a bunch of sheep walked by. So the biblical aspect as to where we live right now isn't something that I ever forget any minute of the day. Wow, that's, that's awesome. So we should go to the next spot and check out this other location. You said you got some more spots to show us. We have an incredible spot to come through. Let's go there now. I'll show you everything. Let's Absolutely. Do it. I've never had a tour from a Tennessee guy. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee, I'm, like, I'm like, not even a tour guide. <laughs> I know, it's totally, totally crazy, 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 crazy. So you want to follow in the car? Yeah, well, the car. Why, don't, why don't you come with me in here? If I'm want. taking that spot. Come right, on now. Wait a second. And then on the way back, you take that <laughs> spot. standing on the site right now that was the site 2,500 years ago during the Second Temple period. There wasn't necessarily settlement on this site itself. It was more of a walking path from Hebron, Beersheba, Beersheba, all the places that we read about hundreds of times in the Bible. It was a walking path that took the Jewish nation directly through the high holidays, right before the high holidays with their sacrifices and all their golden wear and all the beautiful clothing they would wear, all the way to the temple, which Obviously, uh, from here, around 17, 18 kilometers. But this area right here, this, this is where the ritual bath is, right. wow. the mikvah as we call it. And what makes this a special ritual bath where you don't see it too often in the world is that there is a path leading down and there's a separate stairway leading up. That way, those that are impure won't touch the pure spiritually coming in and out. Wow. And the reason why they put it here is if you walk up to the top of this hill, you can see Jerusalem for the first time over the, over the hills on a clear day. Wow. So we may be standing within five meters of the actual original path, and it's probably a few meters below us because of time, yeah. right. but this is it. This is where Abraham would walk. This is where Isaac and Jacob would walk. Yeah. This is where millions of the nation of Israel would walk. And it's mind boggling. I just think this place should be more than it is. I think Jews and Christians Absolutely. should come here and dip in this beautiful rainwaters all day, every day. 
and enjoy the beauty of Judea. I mean, look around us. It looked the exact same to Abraham when he walked here as well. The reality is this is God's land. God gave this land to his nation. And you notice how this land flourishes now when we come back to it? It didn't happen before, right? I think the, the battle is, is, is God said it. And you said in the beginning, spirituality. God said that this was gonna be the land for the Jews, right? Okay. This was gonna be the land for the Jewish people. They're gonna come back here and that's what the whole world, because there's this, what are they doing? They're, they're hating God, it seems like. They're like, God said it, we don't want it, right? Correct. And so that's what you, I think is beautiful is, is you're walking in there. These children are walking in it, even if they don't even know it. They're four, you know, five years old. They're walking this path that Abraham walked and they're walking right into the promise that God said you're gonna be here yet. And that's what the miraculous thing is here. It's like, it's ridiculous. It is. Right. There's, they we're close to Hebron. How many Arabs are there in Hebron that are saying, no, Jews cannot walk here, right? But what are they doing? They're walking here. It's like God said it, it's, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter if the whole world decides what God says is not gonna happen. As I always say, the land waited for the nation to return, to meet it halfway in order for the roots to grow. I don't have to explain to you what it's like about roots growing, that's what you do. Your hands are blessed to be in the soil of this land every day. So when we return, the roots joined us. And the neatest thing about this country is, even after the family that we saw when we were driving past here, whose son was killed on the Lebanese border as an officer, a couple days after the funeral, I spoke to his mother. And I said, look, honestly, is this, is this worth it? Is this, I mean, your son was just literally killed by a Hezbollah rocket. They waited in a bush for three weeks to kill an Israeli soldier. Everybody wants to slaughter us. Is this worth it? And it's an honest question. You know what this woman looked at me and said? She just lost one of her sons and four others are combat officers as well. She said, Ben, it is forbidden to give up. My Lord, can you imagine? Because those children and the children that grow up here, faith is in their bloodstream. Whereas we, and I say me, I'm not saying you, we had to struggle for faith growing up. So for me to watch them and to watch them grow and to protect them while they do it and to help them in any way I can, just like you say, it's a blessing to be chosen for you, I swear it's a blessing for me to be chosen to be here as well. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I got awesome. a couple more questions yeah. for yeah, we you. Let's move to a different location that we could actually take a look at or something. Hey, Doc, Well, Ben, it's been incredible talking to you, and, and obviously we feel your uh, your heart connection to this place. It's, it doesn't just, you know, you see your face, see it, what you're saying, you see it, you're at it, you're like, you got this awesome town car, you do patrols and stuff here. To me, it's like, it's, 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 I don't know if it was a boyhood dream for you in a sense to always be in security, but for some reason you're here, it's like it's become, you embody it, like it's what you do. But I, I want to go much deeper into that a little bit and just kind of talk a little bit about kind of like the families that are here. I mean, you were telling me just a second ago, just over this hill, literally over the hill was where the, the three boys were kidnapped. Uh, that's, that was a tragedy that, that basically captured the attention of, of Israel, of course, but then the entire world was captured by that. And then kind of what was what was this community's response to that? You know, and, and how do you explain that to your kids? I mean, you have three children, like how do you describe, tell them, hey, there was these guys that kidnapped these, these three boys and then buried them in a the field. Like, what, what do you say to that? We actually just spoke about that yesterday. Uh, it's very interesting you mentioned that story because I just described that to my children. And in Israel, it's almost a rule, especially out here. I don't know about Tel Aviv and those areas, but out here, the children are taught the reality of what's going on as it happens. They don't hold back. The teachers explain to them if there was a murder, which there was, uh, a boy named Ezra Schwartz was sh shot in the head on the street over this hill, where the, right where the boys were kidnapped. and on that same terror attack, which I was at the back of the line of cars when it happened, uh, a principal of a local school was killed in the same attack. And that school is on the same compound where my kids go to school. And it's, what do you tell a seven-year-old, an eight-year-old? How do you explain that to them? Well, you tell them precisely what's going on, what happens, and how it happens. This is the reality of the world right now. 
as beautiful of a life that we have and as peaceful as it seems, there is evil. There is danger. I was raised that way growing up in Tennessee and I don't necessarily always have to equate a gun with security and safety. Anybody can shoot a gun. But I always, in every picture growing up as a boy, I had a little pistol or a little BB gun in my hand. That's never left me. From the age of 12 and 13 in Memphis, Tennessee with the anti-Semitism that we saw every Friday night, bottles being thrown at us walking home from the synagogue every weekend. I wasn't a tough kid. I had to learn to become vigilant. And then I became kind of the protector of the neighborhood. And that really has morphed up until this day, whereas every single night, I don't have to. But I do have to in my, in my heart. I have to come out here and patrol this fence line. I come out here at three o'clock in the morning on the very path we're on, and it's so much fog you can't see five meters in front of you. Yet I'm still out here singing, and I've got my lights on. You know why? Because I tell myself, and this is not heroics, this is not Rambo at all, I want to be the first person they hit so my children can sleep. Because I know once that gunfire starts, or once that attack starts, every single man is gonna jump out of his window if he has to in his underwear with a pistol or a rifle locked and loaded to protect the people that they love. Only because we wanna live. So how do you explain to your kids that when we go to the Gush Etzion Junction, that guys, if something happens, I need you to cover your heads and we practice, cover your heads. We have to practice that in case the rocks start to fly, in case the bullets start to fly. But you have to be always vigilant and you have to teach your children that as much goodness as there is in this world and as much goodness that we have to give to each other and to our brothers and sisters, you always have to be prepared for the eventuality of darkness and, and evil. So I learned one more thing from at my friend's funeral that was killed in Lebanon, Lebanese border. His officer at the funeral said this and it stuck with me every day when I go on patrol. Some of us have to live abnormal lives so the rest can live normal lives. And that's the way I see my life from the earliest of ages. I have to live outside of the comfort zone so they can sleep. And my nickname here is One Man Army, Ish Tzavacha. And I like it, because why not? They should know that when they hear this Tom car rumbling past their house at one o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, they know Goldstein's out there and they do tell me we can sleep better at night. And that's worth everything to me. I live by another line that is, uh, see everything, admire nothing. So when you're in security, you have to see everything and not get it. You don't have to admire something walking past you. You have to see it all, but don't spend too much time focusing on one thing. The one thing that I have to focus on, which is only positive, only good, is unity with a big capital U. Okay, that's the only university I've ever gone to, is the <laughs> Unity University. And just like right now, we're spreading unity without any question. So to every single person I meet is always with a smile and a handshake until I learn that that smile and that handshake is no longer welcomed. But until that point, I hand out cold drinks to the Arabs tending these fields. Cold seven ups and waters and I get their names, I get to know them. It's always with a kind greeting because I don't know who they are. I don't know what their past is. I don't know if one day they may rescue a kid that's out here and fell on his bike and can't. My own car has been changed tires while I was out of town, my wife's car. The tires were changed by a group of Arabs in Neve Daniel, the community. Uh, in the middle of the winter, they told her to stay in the car. They wouldn't even accept money afterwards from me three weeks later. So at the end of the day, I try not to live in that fear and I try to cut through the darkness, spread the light through unity. That's it, that's the message. Israel has to be a message of unity. We have to get out of this enclosed, introverted aspect of what we were used to maybe in Europe for a thousand years. Out of that, what I call the ghetto mentality and open ourselves up to this mass level of unity. And then I know redemption will come from all of us. No matter what that means to you personally or me personally, that is what I believe in. And that's what I want to continue to spread. Ben, is there anything, if people want to get involved to help in any way with what you're doing, is there a way to do that? Absolutely. For the past four years since the Gaza war, I used to walk through Hebron, just me, with bags of food and whatever else I thought the soldiers might need and just go from station to station and hand it out to them. And eventually I came up to a soldier and I asked him, I said, okay, brother, what do you really need? I mean, how much bomba and <laughs> chips and colas can you possibly? He looked, showed me his vest. He said, look at this, it's horrible. Two piece vest systems, no flashlights on their rifles. Since then, I have had so many partners stand up shoulder to shoulder with me. I'm not an organization. There's no fees involved. I don't hand any money out to any staff afterwards because there is no staff. I pay for my gas with it. 
and I buy myself a shawarma with it. But what I do is I hand out now to these communities just like mine, projectors, these lights, these handheld lights by Lead Lenser. And they are 3,000 lumens. They run for around four hours and they just light up the night. And you can see out 700 meters. Stuff like that is exactly what I need for people that truly want to step up. Let's truly spread the light, all pun intended, by showing that we are all working on this together. So thank you for asking, because yeah. I am a one-man band. And I'd like to open that up a little bit. And the last thing I'll say is, look, we were all made, we're a 12 tribe nation, not a one tribe nation. Each tribe had their own roles. And I learned from that as well. We all have our own roles and we're all doing it. Thank you all very much. Hey, thanks, Ben. My thank pleasure, you. my honor, thank you. Thank you, Yashikov, to you as well, thank you. Uh,